welcome to the Hammond Solutions channel. I'm going to continue our series on how to migrate a VMware cluster from an old vCenter into a new vCenter. Before we begin, there's several topics that we need to lay some groundwork for. Before we get into the live demo, I'd like to cover a couple topics, specifically definitions of some of the cluster features that we're going to talk about, different types of VMware virtual networking, switch port configurations as it pertains specifically towards a network switch, and the requirements that you have to change on the host. Lastly, we're also going to cover steps to migrate from a VDS on our old vCenter to VSS switches on the hosts, and that should be done before we move the cluster to the new vCenter. Uh, I kind of sort of forgot to do that. Fortunately, newer versions of VMware are way better at handling it than they used to. We'll cover how I made a mistake, but how it was easily resolved. And then from the VSS, we'll move it to the new VDS on the new vCenter. So some of the VMware terminology that I want to make sure we understand is vMotion. vMotion provides the ability to move a virtual machine while it's still running between two physical servers. This includes the computer and or storage, such as the disk image. Other hypervisors call this migrate. So we're going to take a virtual machine that's up and running on let's say host A, and we're going to migrate it or vMotion it to a new host, let's say host C. That VM will remain up the entire time. Now you can send a ping test, you know, while the migration is happening, you shouldn't lose much, maybe a couple pings, but that's totally normal, give or take, depending on your application environment. Another topic that we're going to talk about is high availability, which I've written out as, if one physical server has a problem, the VM goes down as if the power cable was pulled out from a physical server. The VM then reboots on a different physical server. The purpose of this is to provide a high level of access to a resource, being the VM. Let's say we have a VM running on host A. It's running, everything is great. Well, somebody decided to do some rewiring in the closet and uh, accidentally pulled both of the redundant power supply cables to that host. It was a human mistake, and uh, it happens to the best of us. What happens is the VM goes down hard. Now, this is the same thing as if you had a desktop and you pulled the power. Windows just completely crashes, blacks out, everything's dead. Now, depending on your BIOS or UFI settings, you plug the power back in, the computer comes back up, Windows boots, you go about your business. Same type of thing happens, except this happens on a different server. So if we were on server a to begin with, now that VM might start up on server D, and that's all dependent on what resources are available. So the VM will come up just, again, as though you pulled the power. Another topic is DRS, Distributed Resource Scheduler. What this does is this balances a cluster. So let's say you've got five VMs that are all have the same type of CPU, RAM, hard drive type of requirements. So let's say that on host A, you've got five virtual machines that all have the same requirements workload. On host B, you have five VMs that also have the same workloads as what's on host A. Now, if we look at host C, and let's just say there's A, B, C in the cluster, there are no VMs. So what DRS would do is say, hey, this isn't good. We've got resources over here that could actually perform better than some of these other hosts. So let's just move them. So now we use our concept called vMotion. Without any interruption, that VM moves from host A. Let's say two VMs from host A move to host C. Again, no interruption. Two VMs from host B move to host C. Now we have host A that has three VMs, host B has three VMs, and host C now has four VMs. And for all intents and purposes, that's probably about as balanced as it's going to get. A very basic example, but at a bigger scale, your VMs can move. Those settings for DRS and HA are configurable within VMware. You also have what's called EVC, or Enhanced vMotion Compatibility. To read, EVC creates a baseline level for CPU versions. Generally speaking, a newer process can do all the same instructions as an older processor. If you want to move a mixed hardware cluster of CPU versions, the compatibility must be set to the lowest version. This allows the older instruction set to run on the newer version without any compatibility problems. So I'll walk you through an example. 
let's say that we've got a cluster that has four hosts and those hosts are five years old. There's 50 different ways that we could do a migration. One of the options is you could take your brand new servers and add them to that existing cluster. Or depending on your vCenter setup, is to create a new cluster. But the gotcha, one way or another, is that if you want to move those VMs from the old cluster onto the new hardware, and if you want to do it live, you have to set the EVC on the new cluster for the CPUs to the same version of hardware that's on the old cluster. That will allow you to use vMotion to move the VMs between the clusters live without any interruption. In order to get the new instruction set for the new hardware that you just bought, you're going to have to completely shut down the VM, upgrade the level of EVC within the cluster, and then start the VM. There's an outage hit somewhere in there. It's just a matter of when you want to take it. Maybe the old hardware you have to get out as soon as possible because you ran out of time and the lease is up and you need to get them back, you know, yesterday type thing. So you're more concerned about moving them. That's one option. A second option is to create your new cluster with your new hardware with the EVC level of the new hardware. What that means is, on your old cluster, you have to completely shut down the VM, and then you vMotion it to the new cluster. And then, after you've set the new EVC, then you start your VM, and then it starts up, life's good. You've taken your outage. There's two options. You could either take an outage up front, or you could take it later. At some point, you're gonna get a hit. The nice thing is, is if you do the later option, well, it's on your own schedule. There's some flexibility in there. As far as VMware virtual switches, you have what's called a VSS or a VDS. Now, as far as what the V stands for, I've seen it five different ways. Either the V stands for virtual, VMware, vSphere, vNetwork. I just tend to call it virtual. Virtual standard switch. It's kind of rare, but sometimes you'll see SVS. So a common example for something like this is I have five Windows PCs that are completely independent of each other, meaning there's no group policy. So if I want to change any of the policies on those hosts, I have to touch each five of those machines. You also have what's called a VDS, virtual, the DS stands for distributed switch. The virtual distributed switch is like a Windows domain. I could create a group policy and that's going to apply to all the machines, provided they're in the correct OUs, permissions, etc. So I can make one change and that's going to replicate to all the hosts that are joined to that domain. On a VSS, you have what are called port groups. And those are used to define a VLAN. There are other settings that you can use. In this context, we're going to talk about a port group. I'm going to have to create that same VLAN ID on each of the hosts in the cluster. Now with the distributed switch, I just create however many port groups I need on the distributed switch, and then that replicates down to the host themselves. In a typical migration, you could export a VDS from an old vCenter and move it into a new one. It all depends on who you're talking to and the environment. A very important topic that I oftentimes have um, discussions with customers about are the difference between access port and a trunk port. Specifically, what I'm talking about is within a switch configuration, you've got the actual port itself. You could create a default VLAN within a switch, or you could create a VLAN based on the actual port itself. In most enterprise environments, it's by port, unless you have dedicated switch just for out of band management. In a typical environment, You've got two physical switches, and then each host has a minimum of two links, one going to each of the hosts. Those links are oftentimes called legs. We're going to use that terminology later. But the way to think about an access port is an access port can only have one VLAN assigned to it. Now, the beautiful thing is, though, you don't have to do any configuration on the host, the guests, or the hypervisor. That's all done at the switch. So the host says, hey, I'm going to send traffic down the pipe or the leg, and it's going to hit the switch. The switch says, oh, yeah, I know which network that's going to. No problem. Here's the ID. Business as usual. Life's good. You also have what's called a trunk port. The cool thing about a trunk port is you could assign multiple VLANs to a port. You're allowing access for all those VLAN traffic to pass through the wire to the host. The gotcha or the requirement is that you have to tag at the host. Unless you're using something called a native VLAN on a trunk port. A good example of this is Nutanix, where you have a hypervisor and a CVM. They're supposed to be in the same subnet and VLAN. For Nutanix, it's the best practice, actually. They use a native VLAN for 
the management and CVM traffic because that makes expanding a cluster later much easier. So what that means is, case in point, the management CVM traffic doesn't require tagging. That traffic comes out of the host, hits the wire, hits the switch that says, hey, my traffic's here, and the switch knows where to route it. From that standpoint, it's kind of like an access port because no tagging is required. Now, the important part, though, is your guest traffic or your VM traffic for your servers, those port groups must be tagged in the switch, whether distributed or standard switch. I'm going to step through all this using diagrams, and I'm also going to demonstrate how to do it while we do the demo. I've listed the steps here. That way you can use them for your own reference and kind of modify them as needed. What you see here is a diagram of the existing environment. I've got four hosts. Each host has two physical network ports that connect to two separate switches. One of the ports goes to one switch. The second port goes to the second switch. Now, this is a combination of a physical and logical diagram because the lines represent the cables. You can see the naming here where it says VDS old. And the important thing to note is I already have the port groups there. So this is everything before we even get started. The first thing we're going to need to do is create a standard switch on each of the hosts. Because remember, that doesn't replicate. After you create the standard switch, you're going to need to create the port groups. Because that's what's going to allow the VMs to operate on that traffic. And it's also important to note the configuration has to be the same. Assuming you want to be able to move a VM from, let's say, the far left server to the far right server. If you don't have the same VLAN on all of the hosts and you want to move it to one of the hosts that doesn't have that VLAN, the vMotion will fail. You can move one of the legs to the standard switch. Having these two legs in this configuration provides the redundancy that we need to be able to operate or communicate from the physical in the logical back to the physical. Before we can move the second leg, we need to actually migrate the VMs that are using the distributed switch to use the new standard switch, and you need to use move the VM kernels. VM kernels we'll discuss in the live video. Just note that you have to move those, because if you don't move those before you move that leg, those VMs in the VM kernel are going to lose access to your network, which is what we're going to do in this step. Migrate the second leg from the old VDS to the new VSS. And what that allows us to do is delete this old VDS because it's no longer being used. From there, you can migrate your hosts from the old vCenter onto the new vCenter. After you've removed the old distributed switch, you can do things in multiple orders. And like anything, there's 50 different ways you can do anything. I like to create my new cluster within the new vCenter and set up my HADRS and EVC settings before I move any hosts. That's what I like to do. That's what I'd recommend doing. You could certainly move those hosts at this point. In our live demo, we're going to create a new VDS in the new vCenter, so that way you can see it from scratch. The process of moving from a standard switch to a distributed switch is pretty much the same, just reverse order. In this slide, I've demonstrated that we're still running on the VSS, with the assumption the hosts have been moved to the new vCenter cluster. And we've created a new VDS. And again, remember, you must create the port groups there. After you've done that, then you can move one of the legs from the VSS to the VDS. Now you can update the VMs for the network to use the port group on the new VDS. That allows you to get off the old VDS. So update your VMs, also move the VM kernels, the order that you do it does not matter. The important thing is that you make sure you do it. In older versions of VM, it was not forgiving. In newer versions, it's much more forgiving. If something doesn't work, generally speaking, it'll roll back to whatever configuration was working. There may be some slight interruptions of service, but you're still going to regain control. In this slide, we're moving that second leg. And what that's going to allow us to do is delete the VSSs. This slide shows a cleanup, so the VSSs are gone, we're no longer operating off them, working on the new VDS. Everything's hunky-dory, life's great, and at this point, we're going to drop into the live demo. I'll see you over there. Give some context where the tab on the left is the old vCenter, the tab on the right is the new vCenter that we just built in our previous video. To start, I'll copy my funky data center name. I'll right click and say new data center, paste. Now we need to create a cluster 
Nutanix best practices is whatever your Nutanix cluster name is, use it as your VMware cluster name. Yes, I'm really that lazy to copy and paste. Now, right click, say add new cluster. We'll paste our cluster name. The important thing is when you're creating a Nutanix cluster, there's a couple settings you have to do before you add the nodes to the cluster. This is me running in my lab on a trial license. All this is temporary. So I've got the luxury of 30, 60, 90 day trial. I can't remember what the default is. But uh, in our case, we'll just go ahead and enable DRS and HA just so we can play with all the features. Go ahead and leave vSAN off. VUM is going away. This is VMware's new version of it. For right now, we're just going to go ahead and leave this as the default. And we'll say next wants to know what's our image based on. I just updated my lab nodes the other day, so I know I'm running 7U30, and uh, Nutanix is not a vendor in this list. At this point, we'll just say none. And we'll say next, and then a good old confirmation, finish. You can see our cluster has been successfully created you know, based on our status here. And I usually like to see about three events in here. First thing that's easy, node is a Nutanix name for a physical server. My nodes are old, so I'm going to say edit. I'm going to say enable Intel EVC. And that's going to be based on Broadwell. Graphics, we'll just leave that as baseline. This validation successful, okay. First thing I usually like to do is start off with HA. You can see proactive HA is turned off, which is good. We're gonna say edit. Leave the default, enable host monitoring, checked for on. The settings, we're gonna say host failure response, we're gonna restart VMs, that's good. For the response for host isolation, we're going to want to say power off and restart VMs. For the PDL, we're going to say disabled. For the, for the APD, we're going to say disabled. And for VM monitoring, say disabled. Admission control, I've got a very small cluster. It's all labs, so I don't really care. I get tired of all the annoying messages, so I just disable it. The Heartbeat Data Store can't change this right now because we don't have any hosts added, but we can go to Advanced. So what this does, ignore insufficient Heartbeat Data Store. Set as true. Using its best practice, keep the containers or data stores to a minimum. Click OK. For DRS, we really don't need to make any changes. We are going to need to do some overrides, but we can't do that until we've migrated some hosts. Before we could start moving hosts, we need to do some networking changes on our old hosts. If we go back to the cluster, click on the host, let's say configure, virtual switches, let's say unlink, okay, networking, add, then we're going to say create a new switch. We're going to add our VMNIC3. OK, next. A hard requirement for Nutanix is that the CVMs, the controller virtual machines, are on the same VLAN as the ESX management kernel. So those have to be on the same VLAN. In my case, I've got a trunked VLAN, the native VLAN assigned as the VLAN that the hosts use for management. And then we're going to say management. Having a native VLAN, I say none. Next, finish. We need to add a couple more port groups real quick because we need those for some of the VMs. Existing switch. And we're going to say 100. Next, finish. For the sake of time, I'm going to create the rest of the port groups on the standard switch offline. As of today, my hosts are in the existing vCenter on a distributed switch. 
This includes the VMs themselves as well as the VM kernels. VM kernels are used for many purposes. I've pulled up a list of all the available kernels. The most important VM kernel type is management. This allows us to administer a host, exactly what we're doing right now. Another common type of VM kernel is for vMotion. Another common VM kernel type is for storage. In this test environment, I don't have a VM kernel for storage. That's what the purpose of the CVMs are. The process of migrating a VM kernel can be a little bit confusing. The trick is you have to go to the target of where you want the VM kernel to go. If you'll notice here, the menu is available underneath vSwitch0. That's the standard switch that we already created. If you go up to the original distributed switch, you'll notice the menu to migrate the VM kernel is not there. Let's go ahead and move the VM kernel. So you have to select the destination. So migrate VM kernel adapter, and we're going to say VMK0. I'm going to say next. And we'll just say management, and that's native. As far as a, from a physical networking standpoint, each of the hosts has quantity to 10 gig interfaces. Each interface is configured as a trunk port, meaning that it could carry multiple VLANs. The alternative to that is what's called an access port, which is a, si a single VLAN. And by default, an access port, by definition, can only have one VLAN, aka it's natively tagged, meaning you don't need to tag at the host. Now, with trunk ports, you have two options. If you want a VM, or a server for that matter, to run on a specific VLAN, so you could either assign a native VLAN to the trunk port, or you can tag the VM to the specific VLAN that you want. Nutanix's best practice is to use a native VLAN for the ESX management and CVM traffic. And so that's what we're doing. In our case, we don't have the actual ID. It's quote unquote zero, which is the equivalent of a default. So we'll say next, and we'll say finish. You can see our management. Now we've got one more kernel to move, so we're going to say migrate VM kernel. We're going to want to move VMK2. Say next. VMotion. Six finish. Finish. And then we need to repeat that on other hosts. You might be asking a question, well, Tim, why didn't you move the VMK1? Well, this is a very, very special VM kernel for Nutanix. It's actually on its own local standard switch to begin with. The details of that are really outside of the scope of this. If you'd like to learn more, check out Nutanix's documentation. But to keep it extremely simple, don't move it. Don't touch it. Leave it alone. The reason being is if you break that, you could lose access to your storage. Before we could proceed, we need to create the distributed switch on the new vCenter. So now we're going to go distributed switch, new distributed switch. We'll give it the name. I need to add some other hosts, and I honestly can't remember which version they're on. So we're just going to leave it at 7 for now. Next. The number of uplinks in this case is the number of physical uplinks, so we only have two. The rest of this could all be just left as default, except we'll create a default port group. No thanks. We're going to do all this manually later. Next, click Finish. We're going to go to our new distributed switch. You right click on the distributed switch, distributed port group, new distributed port group. Give it a name. Leave everything default except for here. We're going to say VLAN, and we need this to be 100. You could see that my names are based on the VLAN. It's pretty common for customers to do that. It just makes it very easy to identify it. All right, so we'll say next, finish, and we're going to need to do that a couple more times. And as we do that, we can click networks, and you can just verify.
in my case, I have the native VLAN for ESX and CVM management traffic. That's tagged natively. So I'm going to say distributed port group, new distributed port group, even though they are technically VLAN 5, and that's natively tagged on the trunk port. Click Next. As far as VLAN type, just leave it alone. Just say None. So say Finish. Need to add our good old vMotion. See, and if we do a nice job of naming, we could see we have a nice order. The reason I've got so many VLAN 5s is the ESX management, that's for VMware. The CVM is the controller virtual machine for Nutanix. That actually has two interfaces. The first one is for management. And by default, all the storage and CVM management is on the same interface. Now, in newer versions of Nutanix, depending on your environment, people like to break that off so that the storage is quote unquote separate. It makes things very complex. I would recommend avoiding it if possible. For the sake of adding the ports on the VMs to the correct port groups, for me, it just makes management a little bit easier. And you can see the same thing is, is over here. Now we should be able to add hosts. So if we right click, say add hosts. And say next. Yes. Okay. All right, and it's saying one host has a warning and it says there's four VMs power on. And we're gonna leave this just default. I'm gonna say finish. Now, while this is going, it occurs to me we need to do a couple other things. You can see the number of VMs that are on each of these port groups. It's fine, there's no change there. We have two VMs that are on VLAN 101. We're gonna need to add those to each host as well. Just like here, we did VLAN 100. We don't need to do that to that one. Say so add port group, existing switch, Another very important thing is you want to convert your templates. That one host moves successfully. So let's go ahead and add the rest. So add hosts. It's hard to read because it's a dark theme. Now, all of these, that uh, depends who you talk to, should have the same passwords. Some environments force everyone to change them. Say next. Don't import image. Finish. Okay, it looks like that finished. Now, I've seen this every once in a while. What happens is the host won't go into the cluster, so all you have to do is just drag it. 
Okay. Let's add our host to the distributed switch. So if we go to networking, if we say add and manage hosts, we'll say add hosts, because we don't have any now. We're gonna select all our hosts. I like to do this little baby steps at a time. So VMNIC three assigned uplink two. And remember earlier, uplink one was on the other distributed switch. Say next. And then as far as our VM management kernels, VMK0, that's the ESX management. This gets very crowded for me and it gets nuts depending on the length of the names. VMK0, we're going to want to add to VLAN ESX management assign. VMK2, that's going to be our vMotion. So it's going to be VLAN 6. For VMK1, this is very specific to Nutanix. So if you have Nutanix and you see a VMK1, do not touch this. That's what connects your storage. So we'll say next. As far as the VM networking, we'll get there in a second. We'll say next. We're going to say finish. To VMware's credit, through major versions, especially 6, 7, and now obviously 8, they've done a much better job of being resilient on networking. And so what I mean by that is, in versions 5 and before, if you did something wrong on networking, a lot of times you'd lose access to the host and you'd have to make a trip to the data center and the KVM. Not a good time. In this case, it's actually moved everything and it kept a phantom copy of the old distributed switch on each host. That's why each of the VMs is actually still up. What I need to do is move everything that was on that distributed switch to this local standard switch on each host, and then we can move on to the new distributed switch. I'm going to do that on the first host, just as an example, and then we'll move on to other things. When we go to the VMs, for instance, so if we say hand CS1, so if we say edit, see how it's gray? So if we say browse, we could say VLAN 100 and say OK. Now that's on the standard switch. Then we want to make sure, say OK. And then same thing for VC01, which is our old vCenter, which I'm just keeping around so we can use this copy and paste type thing. Now this should actually stay where it was, or is, I should say, because this is VLAN 100. Yep. For the CVM, as an example, we're going to say edit settings. We don't have a VLAN quote unquote five, so we need to add that before we can make any changes to that. What we're going to do is we're going to say configure virtual switches. We're going to go down to our vSwitch zero, say add networking. And we're going to give it a name. We're just going to say CDM and GMT. And remember, that's native, so we don't need to do anything. Just leave it zero. Go back to VMs. Right click, edit. Browse this. Let's say CVM. And this is the same thing. So CVM management. Network adapter two, CVM iSCSI. That's very specific to Tanix. That being said, do not touch this. If you do, you will lose access to your storage. Okay? Now this is one of the VMware VLCS nonsensical type things. Edit settings, there's actually no network card on here. No changes are required. Now that we've added our CVM management over here, we should be able to add ESX01 to the distributed switch. Before that, we should probably go ahead and clean this up. Go ahead and say remove. That worked because there's nothing else using it. If we go to 
networking and we say add hosts and we're just going to do mes601 and now vmnic2 can be added to uplink1 on the new distributed switch vmk0 that's the esx management is going to go to esx management In this environment, VMK1 is used for Nutanix. It's very, very standard. So if you're using Nutanix, do not touch this. VMK2, on the other hand, is for vMotion. So we're going to go down here and say VLAN 6 ESX vMotion. Okay. Then you unclick that so we can get a nice, pretty view. I'm going to say next. As far as the migrate VM, we're going to do that manually at least in the first example. So we're going to leave that unchecked, say next, finish. If we go back to ESX and we see virtual switches, we can see our new distributed switch. You can see uplink one is VMNIC2. ESX management is the VM kernel. And then ESX vMotion is vMotion. What that means is that's no longer using that old standard switch. If we go to virtual machines on that host, with the CVMs, I take a lot of care. With these, I'm going to actually do these manually. For the network adapter one, I'm going to say browse. And what I'm going to say here is, and it's really hard to see. I really wish these columns, you could expand these. But see how it says distributed switch? Network adapter one on the CVM is for the CVM management. So we're going to say OK. And then network adapter two, again, specific to Nutanix, this SVM iSCSI, leave that alone. Do not touch this. Network adapter three, we're going to say browse. I'm going to scroll down and we're going to go VLAN five CVM backplane. OK. At this point, the CVM is now running on the new distributed switch. Now, we could either go through each one of these hosts and manually edit it to use a distributed switch, or, like most things in VMware, there's 50 different ways to do it. So here's a little trick. You go to Networking, VLAN 100, right-click, Migrate VMs to another network. And we'll say VLAN 100 Servers, click Next. And this is nice because we could just go through. This makes it very easy to just click what we want. These VMs only have a single network, so it makes it very simple, straightforward. Click Next. So we could say Finish. And bada boom. There you go. So that's done. Go ahead and repeat that for the next hosts. Now we're ready to move all the hosts. Right click, add manage hosts, add hosts, two, three, four, next. We want to change VM NIC2 to uplink one, next. Okay, we want to assign the port group. Zero is going to go to CVM management. Two is going to go to Sexy motion sign. And remember, VMK1 is for Nutanix. Don't touch this. Next. For Migrate Virtual Machine Network, we're not going to do this here. It's way too much clicking. I need to figure out a better, easier way to do it. I'm just going to click Next. Remember, we're just moving over to that new standard switch. That's all we're doing here, and we're moving the VM kernels. Finish. We need to do a little cleanup. If we go to virtual switches, here's the distributed switch. We're going to say remove. 
we're ready to move the host. Add a manage hosts. Next, select all our hosts. Next, I'm going to make vmnic2 to uplink1. Next, vmk0, we're going to assign to ESX management. VMK1, we're not going to touch this because that's owned by Nutanix Storage. VMK2, we're going to add to VLAN 6 for vMotion. Next. We're not going to do the migrate VM networking here. There's a better way to do it. This is too much clicking. Next. Finish. This is the other thing that got cool. We're going to say migrate VMs to another network. We're going to say servers. I'm going to say next. Here's our VMs. Next. Finish. If we go down here and then we go to vSwitch 0, you see there's nothing here. 0, 0, 0, 0. We can remove this. Yes. I guess we missed one, huh? I don't know how we did that. One on one, we can migrate VMs to another network. Go to clients. Next. 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 Finish. CVM management, we're going to say edit migrate VMs. CVM management, let's say next. This is where it gets cool. We say network adapter, we'll just say one. So we could do bloop, bloop, bloop. Next. Finish. Migrate VMs to another network. Uh, and we're going to say CVM backplane. Say next. See how it says network adapter three. One, two, three. Next. Finish. I don't think there were any on 102. Nope. If we go to ESX02, expand this. 0000. zero, zero, zero. Can remove. Yes. We can go here, right click, add manage. So we want to manage the hosts because they've already been added. And we'll say next. We're going to select all. Next. And we're going to take that VMNIC3 and add it to uplink2 because by deleting the other switch, that also unlinked it. We saved a step. Next. No changes on the VM kernels. Next. No change in the VMs. Say next. Finish. As a little confirmation, we can go to backplane. On here, you can see A, B, C, D. If we right click and say edit, CPM management backplane. We've got one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. ESX management. We don't see anything in here because that's really VM kernels. Same thing for ESX emotion. Another thing we have to do is we go back here, right click, and we say settings. And then if we go to availability, we say edit. We have to go to heartbeat data stores and use data stores from the specified list. Click OK. All right, that just wraps up our cluster migration topic. I hope you found this content helpful, and thank you very much for your time. Take care.